know we're getting started. So. Um, hey, everybody, thank you uh, for coming out on a kind of muggy but nice Friday morning um, where we get to celebrate something uh, extremely, extremely cool and an extremely uh, amazing benefit for the communities that will enjoy it. Uh, I'm Colby Sledge. I'm the council member from District 17, where we are all sitting and standing today. Um, but this project encompasses three different council districts. And so here with me is council member Tom Cash from District 18, council member Freddie O'Connell from District 19. Also with us is council member Sharon Hurt at large. State Representative John Clemens is here, John Ray Clemens. And also traffic and parking chair John Green, I saw John. Yeah, there he is, back there, awesome. There have been so many people, many of you are standing here today, who have been involved in this project that goes all the way back to 2017. 2017, when the original walk and bike plan came out, the 12th Avenue South Corridor was the number one priority in the entire county for pedestrian and bike access. And over the years, we talked with multiple communities. We have about a half dozen neighborhood organizations that are represented along this stretch from the Gulch all the way to the 12 South Business District. Everyone got together, everyone had shared priorities, and everyone had unique priorities. And trying to get all those together in one project usually doesn't work out because we have, conflict, we have conflicting priorities, we have budget issues, whatever it might be. I'm happy to say today that every community's priorities are in the 12th Avenue South Complete Street and Green Street. Let me talk a little bit about those priorities. At these intersections, you see more clearly part, p marked pedestrian crossings. You see, uh, you see bus shelters, not just bus stops, but bus shelters. And I don't know if Steve Bland's going to talk about that in a minute. Yes, absolutely. Because a, a running theme in this project is that this... <laughs> It's hard to say. It's a little emotional. This project shows that, that people here matter, okay? Because 12th Avenue South, before this project, quite frankly, was a cut through. And what I heard time and again from residents who lived on 12th was that we want to be a place where we go home to, not a place where people just pass through. And that's what this project has done. We have marked pedestrian crossings. We have bus shelters where people can get out of the rain. We have, we have our protected bike lanes, truly protected bike lanes that protect anyone from on a bike or a scooter, maybe somebody who needs a little extra room to walk, maybe somebody who's in a wheelchair. Everyone gets to participate in this project, and I cannot state enough how grateful I am to the Department of Transportation, to Metro as a whole, to my fellow council members who advocated for this project as well, because now we have a true community asset. Uh, to give you an idea of how things have changed a little bit over the time that this project has happened, in the time that this project was approved and built, we put up at Curb Victory Hall uh, nearly 40 units for veterans who are facing homelessness. So now veterans who served our country and were at fear of basically losing everything now have not only shelter, but they have a safe place to go. They have a safe place. They have a bus stop right outside Operation Sandown where they receive services. In the time this was done, we've added 160 units at 12th and Wedgwood, most of which are affordable, truly affordable units. So we now have 160 new households on that corner who have a bus shelter to wait in, who have a safe place to walk, who have a safe place to drive to work or to school or to wherever they may be. Literally as we stand here, Carter Lawrence is cutting the ribbon on a new expansion of their playground for their older students so they have a place to play, not only when school is in, but because they live around here when school is out. That playground was funded in part by the developer who built the affordable housing at the intersection. So you see how this project ties everything together in our communities. I want to give a big shout out to the Edge Hill Library as well, who's been an amazing advocate. Absolutely, Corey. Um, right now the library is closed. And why is the library closed? Because we're getting renovations at the library. <laughs> so... 
We see we see a library that is a hub of this community, along with the park that's right behind it. We brought a B cycle station that I know I and several others locked into this morning to get here, so that people have accessible, affordable bike transportation to use in their new infrastructure. This project is for everyone, and I cannot say it enough how proud I am and how ready I am for the next one to get started. Because this isn't where it ends; this is where it starts. So thank you all again for being here. I'm going to introduce, like I said, uh, my roommate, uh, my partner in the council, uh, Councilmember Tom Cash from District 18. Councilmember Cash. Hey, thanks, Colby. Listen, I am here uh, because this amazing project, 12 South, 12th, reaches into my district. But I'm going to be up front. These two guys are the ones that brainstormed it, saw it through, uh, working with NDOT and other partners. Uh, we go. Uh, they're the ones that deserve the big credit for, for birthing this and seeing it through to fruition. I'm so gl glad that they that this happened. Uh, you learn as council members that it takes a long time for innovative and, and complex uh, projects to uh, cut, to move from you know brainstorming to implementation. And I'm I'm proud of these guys for seeing it through. Proud that I, they, we sit together on council one on one side, one on the other, and. And I've learned so much from them, and uh, I just hope that uh, in the coming years I can help carry that baton of making 12th Avenue uh, one of the most innovative and exciting corridors in Nashville. And I'm going to uh, pass it over to Councilmember O'Connell. Good morning, everybody. You don't have many mornings as excited as this. Now, I will say my remarks said blue skies. We're mostly there. Uh, the sun is kind of out, and we hope we'll stay dry as people get to experience this. Let's start here. I'm going to follow up on something Councilmember Sledge said. Uh, it's people. Infrastructure is equity if we do it right. And how do we know? Because we saw people arrive here this morning the same way they've been moving around even while this project was under construction. People walked from the communities nearby. People biked from different parts of the city. People arrived using transit. That is equitable use of our public rights of way. Public rights of way are for the public, not just for cars. But you know what's amazing? While we've had this project under construction and while we are standing here this morning, you know what you still see? You still see motorists able to access the city. Gone are the romantic attachments to turn lanes and present are people. We are about to have a grocery store at the bottom of the hill, we hope, again, to Colby's point, from smart development that is going to produce amenities for the community. But what we have right here is a library just around the corner. We have a school. We have a park and a community center. We have colleges and universities right down the road and now these things are accessible to everyone in the community because we got the infrastructure right this is now a complete street what does that mean it means that anyone can use the right-of-way safely and let me tell you just one story from the represent the constituents of Edge Hill that I represent just a few blocks north of here I heard from a family with young children that they started walking as soon as this project was under construction. Under construction, they started walking more. Why? Because they weren't right up against high-speed traffic in cars making their family feel unsafe. So now they walk into the 12 South community. They walk into the Gulch because there is a safe buffer between them and cars. And the motorists are still here. It's how we should do infrastructure. We missed an opportunity several years ago to get 8th Avenue South to look just like this and feel just like this. And the future of the city should look and feel more like this than just high-speed corridors where people feel unsafe moving around in any other way than their cars. We can do better. It's time to get good at doing better. And I can't say uh, my personal gratitude to the person I'm about to introduce is the director of the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure because she knew that we could do better and she she announced early we were going to do this in a year and here we stand and it it is almost on schedule it is the fastest i've seen great infrastructure get developed and it is to her everlasting credit and this will be a testament to what she showed that nashville can do ladies and gentlemen diana alicon hey 
Good morning, everyone. I am super excited to be here, and I look forward to doing many more of these, council members. Um, first of all, I would like to offer a sincere thank you to the council members for hosting this ribbon cutting in coordination with my department. So thank y'all very much for that. Council Member Sledge, you have been the champion of 12th Avenue. So we would have not been here today to have this complete and Green Street project done. You've been relentless, and I appreciate very much that support to bring this to fruition. I'd also like to thank the 12th Avenue community for engaging us on, on, um, on this important complete street project. As we worked with Nashville to create a safe pedestrian and friendly multimodal city, I'd also like to thank the members of our project team who have worked tirelessly for this vision of 12th Avenue South. Anna Dearman, where are you? Back there. brought us across the finish line and I just want to say thank you. It has been amazing what you have done with working with our consultants, our contractors to make sure that this happens, had happened. So thank you again because this is really her, her celebration, not um, mine. So thank you. And the team. So I don't want to leave the team out because it is the team and the community because it's just been amazing. 12th Avenue South Complete Street and Green Street Project is a great one and the kind that I enjoy working on the most. It's a transformational roadway and the first of its kind bikeway that will enhance the quality of life of people for, in Nashville. A problem of safety solved for all roadway users. Those walking, biking, and driving. Here we stand, as the council members had mentioned, near a library, a community center, a park, we go a uh, bus stop, affordable housing, and multi-businesses. With the vision of the community, the council members, and Metro, we've transformed a broken roadway grid into a complete and green street, featuring a physically protected bike lane, bioswells for stormwater management, bus stop improvements, safer crossings for people walking and using mobility devices, landscaping, and more. Projects like this help us meet Nashville's vision zero goal of zero fatalities on our roadways by prioritizing the safety of our roads most vulnerable users we are also looking toward a more sustainable and resilient future as we embrace bioswell storm management stormwater management look around as NDOT moves into its third year be ready to see more projects like this one come to life in our second year NDOT delivered on Madison Station Boulevard and 12th Avenue South We'll continue building and enhancing safety, sustainable, and complete streets to meet Nashville's growing needs in neighborhoods across the, the county. Once again, thank you to everyone who has participated in this project since its inception. I want to also thank Mayor um, Cooper for his support. He was unable to attend today. But most of all, I want to thank this wonderful community. I want to thank our council members, and I feel extremely proud today. So I will now turn it over to our CEO of We Go Transit, Steve Bland. Thank, thank you, Diana, and, and congratulations, and thanks to NDOT and, uh, and your team uh, for this terrific partnership. And I think as any Metro department head knows what happens when Colby is relentless uh, in his pursuit of something. So we do appreciate the leadership of all the council members. So from a transit perspective, we recently completed our 100% our rider survey in the fall. 95.5% of our riders walk, roll in a wheelchair, uh, ride on a scooter or a bike to get to or from their bus stop. So, even if that bus is spick and span clean, even if the service is frequent, on time, the driver's courteous and friendly. If you're standing in a puddle of mud after crossing six lanes of speeding traffic, chances are your overall experience has not been a good one. Uh, 
them. Worse yet, if you have to cross those five or six lanes of speeding traffic, you risk serious injury or even worse. And today we see way too much of that uh, in Nashville. So projects like the 12th Avenue South Complete and Green Streets project are crucial to making public transportation more accessible, more available, and more used in this city. So I can't speak highly enough about this. Um, and it's been a pleasure for our team to work closely with Diana's team to get this one done. So as part of this project, 14 bus stops in total were improved with 12 receiving new or upsized passenger waiting shelters. Several of the stops were relocated to improve pedestrian and vehicular safety, which is important. And you might even notice our new bus stop signs which are going up around the city with more information, more directional information, and a QR code to give you direct access to service information and fare payment information. Information. The design of the stops with boarding islands like what you see out here and raised cycle tracks are extremely important when we integrate multimodal streets like this. Too often where we're kind of shoehorning everything in, there's that conflict as the bus has to cross through the bike lane to get to a curbside stop. So this again, to the point made earlier, keeps a totally protected bike lane. It also enhances transit, service reliability, and safety as we don't have to do the those complicated merges in and out of traffic that cost us time and very often end up in those fender benders that drive our body shop crazy. So, um, on behalf of everyone at WeGo, our board, our riders, certainly our team that was involved, Diana and Dodd council members, Mayor Cooper, thank you so much for this investment. And my only question is, when are we doing the next one? Very soon. Thank you. I think I'm now introducing the project team, uh, Jason, Jerry, uh, to to bring it bring us home. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you. Uh, I'm Jason Brooks with LDA Engineering, and we served on this project for Metro in the role of project manager and program manager and engineer. Uh, and I think if you ask most engineers why they do what they do. The common response would probably be, we solve problems to help people. And at LDA, we call that engineering stronger, happier communities. And man, how rewarding was it to sit and hear the council members and the directors um, describe what they described this morning. All the infrastructure and what it provides really hits in the sweet spot of what we wake up every day to do. So I just say thank you for the opportunity to do that and thank you for the kind uh, comments. We appreciate that. Um, this project was a particular challenge because uh, as it's already been noted, Council Member Sledge set the pace a little over a year ago that we needed to get this done. And so it took a lot of collaboration and creativity and cooperation amongst a lot of players. We used a unique alternative delivery method, uh, primarily leveraging several on-call contracts that both NDOT and Metro Water have. There was a lot of different infrastructure to address, it's already been noted, from the stuff you see at the surface level to, to the utilities below. So to say there was a need to cooperate amongst the departments is an understatement, and boy, did we get it. Uh, it's already been noted that Anna Dearman was, was very instrumental. I would also like to note uh, Tommy Jones, uh, because Tommy's responsible for all that good-looking paving and striping out there. And then the number of contractors that participated with us, who you'll hear from Roy T. Godwin, but also uh, CDM Smith, air partner, uh, Fairpoint Planning, Wilmot, uh, other contractors involved, Jones Brothers, Walker, BAC, Stancil, Kerr. I'm probably missing a few, and if I did, I apologize, but it just illustrates the amount of collaboration that goes on when we need to move quickly. And from the comments we've heard today, I'm thankful that we were able to do that, and I think the proof's there that we can use alternative delivery methods when we're creative and collaborating and get projects like this done quickly. So thank you all for that this morning. I think with that, 
I'm going to wrap up and not take any more time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with y'all this morning. We were proud to work on this project and proud to see the results. And Jerry, you can wrap us up. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jerry Maynard. I serve as Vice President for Government Relations for Roy T. Goodwin Construction. On behalf of our owner, Brandon Goodwin, back there, I stand before you as part of the family of the Goodwin Construction Company. We've been, we're celebrating our 52nd year of being in business. And as Councilman uh, Freddie O'Connell talked about people, I would just like to talk to you about the Goodwin family and the Goodwin family as a construction company. That the people who work so hard. I don't know that song. Goodwin family and, this, and the employees and the staff that work so hard to make this development happen. Oftentimes when you're driving down the street and you see the Roy T. Goodwin trucks, you see the uh, emblem out there, those are our people working hard, working hard every day to provide sidewalks, curbing, and other services for Nashville. Roy T. Goodwin's been doing it for 42 years. We've been in partnership with Metro Government for 42 years to provide sidewalks. Why? Because you don't have a, night, a neighborhood without sidewalks, without the ability to connect, without the ability for families and homes to connect with one another, connect with the businesses around them. Every council person that I know is always talking about sidewalks for their community. And so as Roy T. Goodwin's representative today, we're so proud to be able to be part of this part, this project. We want to thank NDOT. Thank you so much. LDA, we appreciate you. To all the council persons, Kobe doesn't return my call, so I'm so glad he was tenacious on this one. I'm joking. That <laughs> inside joke. And we really do appreciate all of our partners. We go, we appreciate you. We appreciate the opportunity to work with you. I'll leave this, leave, leave this with you. Uh, Brandon Goodwin, our owner, talks about how much it is important that we provide not only the best service at the best price, but we do it because we love the city. We've grown as the city's grown, and we look forward to continuing to provide the services that this city needs to make Nashville a home for those who come to work, play, live, and to celebrate life. Thank you so much. I've learned today I have a reputation. Um, <laughs> Before we wrap up, we're going to have a huge photo where we're going to cram everybody in as we do the ribbon cutting. I do want to recognize Councilmember Henderson. Angie Henderson is here as well. Um, she has been a huge walk bike advocate um, throughout the county. So thank you, Councilmember Henderson, for being here. Um, I did want to follow up uh, a huge thank to the crew who, who has worked on this, especially Roy T. Goodwin. I don't know who is running your social media, but one week you had pictures of the bike lanes and pictures of pouring the pad for B-Cycle, and it was my favorite Twitter account all week because it had me running out of the house trying to find out what was new down here. Um, so as we, as we finish, um, oh, Brenda, I would be remiss if, I, uh, if we had any event in Edge Hill, quite frankly, without, rep uh, without recognizing Brenda Morrow, who is a community staple, the queen mother of Edge Hill. Um, and uh, we're about to have a celebration here in a couple weeks, aren't we? In a few more weeks. Uh, we are going to be, in fact, where you see Horton Avenue right here, um, in three weeks, May 20th, um, we will be back out here renaming Horton Avenue for D. Ford Bailey oh. Sr. It will be D. Ford Bailey Avenue. Um, a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to honor a pillar of the Edge Hill community, um, a pillar of basically Nashville, Nashville history, just period, Nashville history. And uh, so please come back here in a few weeks. Uh, enjoy the bike lanes and, and use them as we celebrate once again. Um, and thank you all again for coming out. I know many of you live here or live around here, but many of you do not. And thank you for investing in our community and caring about our community um, because it is certainly a community worth caring about. Um, that'll conclude our remarks. Where do we need to gather to? Just right here. Awesome.
awesome. Okay, so if everybody wants to come hang out and see if you can get your face in a photo. Thank you all. <laughs> has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.